Today we're going to talk about the 2025 Panigale V4 and V4S and my perspective on that as a 2024 runner as well as a mechanical engineer. One of the big talking points for the 2025 model is the elimination of the single-sided swing arm on the new model and then going to a double-sided swing arm. And so from, from an owner's perspective, like I really like the single-sided swing arm. I think it looks cool. But that's pretty much where the benefits stop. Like they were useful in some racing classes because it's easier to get the wheel off. But in reality, a double-sided swing arm has a lot of advantages over a single-sided swing arm. If you think of this from the perspective of a torsion, right? This thing is only loaded on one side and so you know, if this thing gets loaded, like say you hit a bump, what you can potentially see is the whole swing arm just flex because you have this moment arm. So if you have uh, a double-sided swing arm, it balances that torsion on both sides. And so you don't end up with as much flexing of the uh, you know, torsional flexing of the back wheel whenever the loading changes. It makes it easier to keep constant geometry uh, as you as you go. The other thing is because you have so much, you know, concern about torsion, you have to add a lot more material to the back side of the swing arm. So in order to keep the torsional stiffness really high, they've had to add a ton of material to this swing arm. This single sided swing arm is really, really thick and that's a lot of added weight. So by going to a single sided swing arm, they were able to dramatically reduce some of this weight and still keep the back wheel from rotating and flexing. So Ducati's already said that the switch from the single-sided swing arm to the double-sided swing arm has allowed them to save almost six pounds out of the weight of that rear swing arm. And so that's that's a massive difference because that's all unsprung weight back there. And so what that means is that there's less inertia that the bike has to overcome as it goes over bumps and curves and other things like that when the suspension is really working. And what that translates to is it will make it easier for the bike to be able to keep that rear wheel on the ground. The more time that rear wheel is on the ground, the better it's able to put down power, the more stable the bike feels, the less that you feel like you're gonna lose the rear as you get on the power out of the corner. And so it seems like a small change. And you know, like I said, a lot of people seem to be unhappy that they went from the single-sided swing arm to the double-sided swing arm, but from a performance perspective, that makes a lot of sense. So another area of discussion, a lot of people are not super stoked about the front end of the bike. Uh, me personally, I actually, I like the 24 better than the 25 from an aesthetics perspective. Some of that's probably just because it's new to me and it's new to everybody really. And it's like, whoa, this is a big, this is a big departure, I think, from some of the other bikes that they've done in the past. Uh, but if you look at what they've done in the new bike, it seems to really reflect a lot of the technology that they're integrating into their, their MotoGP bike. This is the technology that has made them dominant in MotoGP and, and they're now bringing that to you in a road bike form. Uh, one of the things that I do think is gonna be a pain in the butt, these wings. So, you know, if you have any kind of uh, off bike excursion with the current bike, if the wings get damaged but the fairing's fine, you can just take the wings off and replace those and you have to replace the whole fairing. The new one, because the wings are integrated into the fairing, you probably, like, even if you drop the bike, you know, just like a no speed parking lot drop, you're probably gonna have to replace that entire fairing in order to repair that kind of damage. Uh, whereas the old one, you can just replace this wing. And so that might be a bit of a pain in the butt uh, one of the things you'll see is that this section right here is cut out a little bit more. And you'll notice on all the current MotoGP bikes, you're seeing that that trend is, is a thing where it's, you know, this whole section gets cut back a little bit more. And really, I think the reason why they're doing that is to allow air to escape uh, through that region a lot better. I think you're going to see that this bike is a lot more aerodynamically efficient and you know, most of us that ride bikes don't really care that much about fuel economy, although this bike has absolutely terrible fuel economy and it might be nice to have it a little bit better so you could go on longer trips. Uh, but I think you'll find that the new bike in general 
doesn't need as much power to go as fast. Where I think you'll really see gains with this are going to be in the top end. I think yeah, the, the wind resistance, the drag on the bike is exponential with speed. And so as you go faster and faster, these small aerodynamic improvements are going to really make a big difference. I think when you hit like 120 or above are when you're really going to see these aerodynamic efficiencies pay off. So one of the areas that I'm really happy to see Ducati focusing on right now is their electronics package. So yeah, I think they've actually kind of fallen behind a little bit compared to a lot of their competition, and especially the S1000. One of the things I'm really happy to see is turn by turn navigation and cruise control. So yeah, I talked to a guy at a dealership years ago before I bought this bike, and he said like, you know, Ducati, they'll never add turn by turn navigation. They'll never add cruise control. This is a race bike. And I don't disagree that this is a very aggressive bike, but let's face it, there are not that many people actually racing these bikes. I mean, the vast majority of the miles that these bikes do every year are on road, not on track. And so the ability to not have to mount my phone to be able to get turn by turn navigation, that kind of thing, that's huge. That makes this bike a lot more usable. Sounds like they've actually also worked a little bit on improving the riding position without necessarily making it, you know, less track focused, without necessarily uh, taking away from the bike's performance capabilities. So what do you guys think? Do you like the double-sided swing arm? Do you like the updates to the front end? Uh, do you like the increases in the technology, the cruise control and turn-by-turn -turn navigation? Let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think. Uh, tell me if you think you might be interested in buying the new 2025 or if you, you're going to look for a, a used 2024. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Ride safe.